So let's think about what this plot is telling us. How can we describe these uh, set of points, the pattern we see here mathematically? Well, I hope that this sort of plot looks familiar. Uh, we saw very similar looking plots when we did box counting in the previous unit. So recall that in that setting, right, we're doing box counting. And we saw that ns, the number of boxes of side s, needed to cover a shape, was given by this formula, which I could also write cs to the minus d. And we saw that d is equal to minus the slope of the line on a log-log plot. So that's what we saw for box counting. And the story is the same, or almost the same, here. It's a log-log plot. We have a straight line. So it turns out that now um, the situation can be described as follows. So now instead of talking about the number of boxes, we're talking about a probability. Right? That's, what's, that's what's on the axis here. And instead of a side of a box S, we're talking about a particular word frequency. And just as before, D, the exponent here, it would be given by the slope of the line on a log, on a log log plot. And we can calculate uh, the constant C or the constant A from the intercept. So in this case, if one does some data analysis, um, one looks at the linear region and um, figures out uh, the best fit line through here, one would find that D is approximately 1.95 and the constant A is about 0 0.59. I'm not going to talk about the best way to do this data analysis just yet. That'll be a topic in the next unit. But for now, let's just say we did some data analysis reasonably carefully. One would come up with these, um, these numbers. All right. So let's say a little bit more about this. So we have a power law. And a power law is just a function of this form. It's a power because the variable, in this case x, is raised to some power. And we have here that this is about 0.59x to the minus 1.95. So in this case, x is word frequency. So suppose we wanted to use this formula to say how uh, likely, what's the probability that a word has frequency 10? So P10 is going to be given by 0 0.59. And then I'm plugging in for 10, it's plugging in 10 for x. So this is 10 to the minus 1.95. So let's see what happens if we do that. So 10 raised to the 1.95, then times 0 0.59. And I get that this is around 0 0.0066. OK, so what does this mean? There are around 18,000 different words that appear in Moby Dick. If you choose one of those 18,000 words at random, what's the probability that that word appears 10 times in the novel? And the probability is pretty small. The probability is 0 0.0066. So this equation obviously doesn't exactly fit the data. There is some um, variation around um, 
this fit, but it's a pretty good fit. Um, and we'll learn later in the next unit how to actually quantify, in some sense, just how good a fit that is. Okay, so this is our first example of a power law. A power law is a mathematical relationship of this form, and we've worked with power laws all in the previous unit because the box counting dimension formula is a power law. Just as we saw for box counting dimensions, a potential signature of power law behavior is this log-log behavior on a plot. Uh, 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 sorry, a straight line behavior on a log-log plot. And as we've started to see, and as we'll see much, mo uh, much more in the next couple of units, one of the interesting features of uh, a power law behavior, a power law distribution of this sort, is that it describes um, a quantity, in this case the frequency of words, that ranges, um, has a very, very large range. So unlike the masses of books that are all probably between a third of a pound and two or three pounds, so that's maybe um, at most varying by a factor of 10, here we have frequencies that range from one up to 14,000. So it describes a very, very large range of data. So um, in the next unit, I'll say a little bit about uh, the central limit theorem and normal or Gaussian distributions, which are very different than these power laws. And then in the rest of this unit, we'll continue to explore some of the interesting and fun properties of power law distributions.